This is the skier problem. Now, the deal is this. You've got an incline. The angle of incline is given. So is the distance up the slope along the incline uh, that the skier starts at. Okay, starts here at rest. There's friction, naturally. Same friction applies in the flat valley. We want to know how far, whoop, how far the skier will go before he comes to rest. Now we want to know this distance here. All right, we're given this distance. I'll call, well, what the heck, I'll call this x, I'll call this distance d. Um, classic conservation of energy problem. Need to find the vertical height so we can get the energy here, which happens to all be potential from gravity, mgh, in fact. Now, h isn't specifically given, but we know that h is uh, d times the sine of theta. Everything there is known. At this point, the, we, you know, we, we know this guy's going to have some kinetic energy, but we also know that all this potential energy will not simply become kinetic energy, but also get converted into work done by friction. This snow uh, between this, on the slope, between the skier and what have you. Anyway, there's, there's friction. We, uh, which means, uh, how do you do work due to friction? How do you calculate that? Well, that will be the frictional force times the distance he uh, travels along and gets that force applied to him. Okay, uh, kinetic. Here's the speed he's going to have down there. Frictional force. We're on a slope, remember? We've got to find this normal force. It's going to be this much of his weight. Here's his weight, mg. Do a little, um, do a little geometry and you'll see this theta and that theta and everybody's happy and that's cosine and whoopee-doo and the frictional force of course is uh, mu times the normal force. The normal force here is mg cosine theta. So one half m v squared plus all of this mu mg cosine theta. This equaling initial potential energy, we can determine the velocity the skier has when he reaches this point. Now, work due to friction is going to continue to happen. While he's skiing along here, frictional force is still um, slowing him down. Uh, now what's the force going to be there? Well, it's still mu times the normal force. The normal force now is all his weight because the valley is now flat. None of this cosine theta stuff. Um, <clears throat> so, the velocity hat he had once he got down to this level is going to be converted into work done by friction, in this case mu mg, and the distance through the valley. So, really, if you look at every all these terms, every the mass of the skier doesn't matter. The mass of the skier goes away in all of the, the um, energy terms. So, not to worry. Mu is simply going to be v squared over 2g. Now v squared is a little trickier because v squared comes from uh, this equation up here. Getting rid of all the g's looks to me like v squared is going to be 2gh minus mu g cosine theta. Oh, that's not so bad. Right, you guys can do it. Plug in your numbers. You're done with the problem. 
x should be in meters if everything has been converted to SI units. That's it.